What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Mr. That a Baboon. We are back with the reaction video. This time we have paranorm paranormal encounters from World War One. <coughs> oh. So if you guys are ready for this and you guys, you know, want to learn about some of this, let's get to it. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. So you guys never miss a video. Uh, check the description. I will have the link for the video and the link for the channel as well in the description. So make sure you guys do check that damn out. Go subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Uh, anything else? Uh, get your cush, your drink, your snack. Let's get ready to watch this. So, uh, I think that's about it. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, get into the reaction. How about that? Okay. Paranormal encounters in World War One. The thousand yard stare, the blank emotionless expression soldiers displayed after experiencing the horrors of war can be seen in countless faces in photographs from World War One. Detached and emotionally distant from reality, soldiers appear to be staring off into the distance, looking out into another world. Psychologists explain this phenomenon as a way trauma victims allow their brain to detach from their horrendous surroundings and cope with the stresses in their environment. Shell shock, another name for men showcasing these symptoms of confusion, fatigue, and impaired sight or hearing abilities could render even the strongest person disheveled and helpless. It is no surprise then that these same battle-weary soldiers with minds full of the horrors of war claimed to see ghosts, ghouls, and even aliens in the dark recesses of battlefields. Today, we would say that these men were suffering from a stress reaction to constant bombardment, death, and chaos. However, at the time, shell shock and the thousand yard stare were seen as signs of cowardice and lack of moral fiber. Therefore, many soldiers did not receive the treatment they desperately needed to heal their <laughs> ailing minds. In examining the paranormal encounters from the front lines of World War I, it is best to remember how broken and pathetic the minds of the men who reported them were. Wild men slash ghouls. One of the creepiest tales among soldiers fighting in World War I was the myth of wild men who lived in no man's land. It was believed that crazed, unhinged bands of deserters inhabited the haze of battlefields. Soldiers often reported seeing dark figures moving swiftly across the horizon line at night. These ghouls, as many men described them, supposedly sunk down in the mud to avoid being seen and only emerged from their hiding spots to loot dead bodies bodies, or by some accounts, to feed upon corpses. Theories about the wild men differed, with some maintaining that they were soldiers who renounced war and were just trying to survive, and others who believed that there truly were cannibalistic lunatics who stalked around battlefields at night. Perhaps a very real reason for the origin of this story was officers' intention to scare soldiers away from deserting their post. If men were convinced that monsters in the mist lurked just outside their lines, they would be more hesitant to run for the hills when the thick of battle overcame them. What doesn't help the tale's believability is that the earliest record of the story came from a 1920 memoir, only becoming a sensation well after the war had Around. ended. Red okay, Baron no and the UFO Famed German fighter pilot Baron Manfred von See, we know who he is. <clears throat> Reacted to him uh, about the uh, Red Baron uh, probably maybe a month, maybe a little bit over a month ago now. I mean, the views did good, it, it did positive views and everything, so. But I never heard anything about like a UFO in that video. On Rick Toffin, also known as the Red Baron, is mostly known for his stunning accomplishments against Allied aircraft and universally recognized flying capability. I have something for you. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the 
series. However, he is also known for possibly shooting down a UFO in 1917 huh? in a Fokker triplane. Fellow German pilot Peter Weitzrich recalls how he and the Red Baron came across an aircraft like an upside down saucer during an early morning mission over Belgium and immediately opened fire on it. The Red Baron hit the unusual looking aircraft and watched as it violently crashed through the trees and hit the ground below. Astonishingly, it is reported that two humanoid figures frantically exited the UFO and raced into the woods. It should be mentioned though, the story first appeared in a satirical magazine called Weekly World News in 1999. And as Patrick Gross has found, there is no record of a Peter Weitzrich having ever existed. Huh. Moreover, the Fokker triplane the Red Baron was said to have used did not exist yet. Richthofen was known to have been using his deadly Albatross D3 at that time instead. The Valkyrie First spotted by Lieutenant Frederick Ardsley, flying a patrol route in northern France when he saw an identical Scout Experimental 5 biplane next to him. The Valkyrie was a female pilot with long golden hair. According to Ardsley, she removed her goggles, <laughs> let out a piercing laugh, and stared at him with cornflower blue eyes before blowing him kisses and performing a can-can dance on the edge of her cockpit. Ardsley attempted to keep up with her, but her abilities were too great and she easily what? outmaneuvered him. At one point, the Valkyrie's aircraft, which featured a golden symbol for Venus on the fuselage, climbed into a bank of clouds at an altitude of 20,000 feet and Ardsley was forced to make a controlled dive back down because his plane stalled. The legend was catapulted into the press when German pilot Albert Roll claimed that he had been shot down by a red-nosed SE-5 biplane that was flown by a woman with blonde hair. Soon, many other German pilots claimed to have seen a ferocious female pilot who hunted the skies with unparalleled skills. However, Arch Whitehouse, the World War I veteran and aviation novelist, had a different take. Whitehouse believed that the Valkyrie myth began as a joke between young pilots who were trying to lighten up the dreariness of war. Supposedly, these pilots decided to put on a theatrical performance at Christmas for a squadron party, and some were forced to dress up as women for the play. Jumping into the cockpits of their biplanes, the men dressed as women got quite a laugh from their comrades, and the enduring image of a bombshell blonde piloting an aircraft began. According to the historian Nigel Watson, however, there's no evidence of Ardsley having existed either. Further, the lieutenant is said to have been in the 49th Squadron, which did not use SE-5 biplanes. Ghost at Ypres on a December Shit. night in 1915, near Ypres in Belgium, a man named William Spate was enjoying another bitterly cold night in the trenches when the most unexpected thing happened to him. Sitting down by a faint candlelight, Spate felt the presence of another in his company. Turning, Spate was horrified to find the ghost of his friend, who he had seen die on the battlefield. The apparition of his friend said oh, nothing to him and disappeared just as quickly as he had been standing in front of Spate. The next night, Spate asked for another officer to sit with him in case the ghost of his friend reappeared. To his surprise, the ghost reappeared, only this time with a message for him. Motionless, it pointed to a spot on the floor before vanishing once again. Not knowing what to make of this, Spate ordered some of his men to dig a hole where the ghost had pointed. Miraculously, the soldiers found a tunnel had been dug under them and rigged with massive amounts of explosives. The bombs were quickly defused, and the soldiers thanked the specter who had saved them. This incident was first described in a 1919 war-themed short story competition for Pearson's magazine. It gained credibility when Sir Arthur Conan Doyle referenced it in his History of Spiritualism collection. Cossacks in Britain. Civil Bro, that is crazy. Like, thinking about that, like, think, like, really think about that. That ghost, if that did happen, that ghost right there, his best friend's ghost, saved his life. Think about that.
Civilians, not just soldiers, were also capable of experiencing paranormal <laughs> encounters. One of the most interesting records of mass hysteria comes from the persistent myth among British civilians that millions of Cossacks from the Russian army were on their way to Britain. First, in late August 1914, local newspapers reported sightings of fierce-looking men with beards and fur hats traveling on trains through Britain. Then, the stories gained traction, and international newspapers were soon detailing how almost a million Russian soldiers were passing through Britain on their way to France. People everywhere were claiming to find traces of the Russians. <coughs> stories of chocolate machines churned up by rubles, warriors marching toward London Bridge Station, and cries for vodka from train cars were soon on everyone's lips. When British intelligence services learned the rumors were false, they did not censor them, which aided the Allies as a cautious German command committed two divisions to guard the Belgian coast against the supposed Cossack reinforcement. Save big and win on the Shoe Carnival Holiday Savings Express with styles from Doc Martens, Nike, Unknown to the Germans and the general populace in the U.S. and Britain, there was no great Russian army moving against Germany from Britain. Only after the Germans made a tactical retreating move that cost them the battle at Marne did the British government issue a statement that the stories of Cossacks in Britain were fake. However, by this time, the story had gotten so big that many continued to believe it. In reality, there were indeed massive amounts of soldiers traveling from the north of Britain to the southern ports, but they were British reservists. These battalions had been given orders to pull the shades down on their train carriages and travel at night to keep their whereabouts a secret. Furthering the myth, some battalions of the British force spoke thick dialects, such as Gaelic, which many mistook as Russian. When studying the myths and paranormal encounters of World War I, it is more tragic than scary to see how war affected their minds and ensured that there were no survivors. Everyone who participated in World War I was a casualty of the war and had to carry the burden of their trauma with them for the rest of their life. While modern audiences can look at these soldiers' ghost stories and find a plausible explanation for the men involved, there was no explanation for the senseless violence destruction, and chaos they lived through every day. As everything they thought they knew about themselves and the world around them was shattered, everything hey. became possible, from aliens to ghosts. That, the animation was really good. The telling about everything was really good too. That's it. That's it for the video. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm going to go try to find a charger for my little pin right here. So, I will see you guys in the next one. Positivity is key. Motivation is key. Happiness is key. Check the description. I will have the channel link and the video link down there. Uh, subscribe if you guys are new. Like the video. Turn on post notifications if you guys don't know so well you guys never miss a video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, watch out for each other. I'll see you guys in the next one.